Hi guys, welcome back to Mysteries Channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video and for checking my channel out. It's very much appreciated. So in my last video, I talk about the possibility that the cataclysmic volcanic eruption of Toba was a part of the many other issues that almost wipe out humanity around 70,000 BC. In that video, I go over that the bottleneck in our genetic record that occurs at this time was likely partially from a large, enormous volcanic eruption, then several smaller ones that happened either for decades to hundreds of years after the initial mega blast, which should be noticed as the largest blast that humanity has ever witnessed. But also, not only that, the ash cloud does darken the sky, makes it so that the climate is absolutely not working in our favor. On top of that, earth, humanity, vegetation, and the wild animals that inhabit the areas that we live are all getting poisoned by vast amounts of fluorine. So I thought, man, if this is the largest volcanic eruption that humanity has ever witnessed, you would think that there would be a myth or an oral tradition or a legend about this. We have a lot of legends, myths, and oral traditions that speak of a great flood. You would think that this would also have one. So I thought, man, it would be really cool if I could go into the Indonesian uh, folklore and find something. Well, I didn't. What I did find is that the Indonesian folklore is very much connected to the Indian folklore. So I went to go look into that and I was completely and utterly intimidated by it. There's a lot, there's a lot, a lot, and I didn't even know where to start, and I truly felt like I was just like trying to pick a needle out of a haystack, so I was like, man, what do I know? I don't know a lot, but I have read up on some of the Sumerian epics and laments, so I thought, I wonder if there is something in there that might fit, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and then I said, oh, dang, look at this. This might be one. So I'm going to tell you guys a story, a story that I want you to keep in the back of your mind, a volcanic super eruption. I am not saying that this story is for sure. Speaking of this event, there may be a possibility that is either speaking of this or something similar. Listen to the story and tell me what you think at the end. The story I found is tied to one of the Anunnaki, specifically Ninurta. Ninurta is one of the seven gods who decree. If you're not familiar with that, I'll link a video below that kind of goes over that. Ninurta is also known as Ningirsu. He is a Mesopotamian god associated with farming, healing, hunting, law, scribes, and war, and he was very first worshipped in early Sumer. He is one of the earliest gods and he was prolific. In the earliest records, he is a god of agriculture and healing who releases humans from sickness and the power of demons. In later times, as Mesopotamia grew more militarized, he started to receive some of those attributes. But in the earliest traditions of him, it is specifically healing and agriculture. He was regarded as the son of the chief god Enlil. His mother is Ninma, who he renames Ninherzog. Yes, you want to watch that other video because she plays a very special role in it as well. What is interesting to me about his family is that his wife is the goddess Bau. She's also known as Gula and sometimes Nintanuga. Gula, Bau, and Nintanuga are likely the same deity, just as Ishtar and Nana Aphrodite are the same entity. Bau is the goddess known as the great healer of the land. She is also known as the great healer of the black-headed ones, as the Sumerians called themselves, the lady who makes the broken up whole again. She also is known as she who creates life in the land, making her a vegetation fertility goddess endowed with regenerative powers. Ninurta's main cult center is in Sumer. It was the temple named Eshumesha, which was in Nippur. He was honored by King Gudea of Lagesh, who ruled about 2144 to 2124 BC. King Gudea of Lagesh rebuilt Ninurta's temple in Lagesh. So what we can surmise from this is that there was a temple there that was earlier than 2144 BC. We don't know how long it lasted, how far back it goes, but even before that temple was there, I guarantee you there was an oral tradition there. Now, the story that I'm going to tell you is a great epic. And when I'm reading this epic, please try to look at it as a possible retelling of an ancient earth event, possibly a super volcano, 
Probably not, but I'm just saying, listen to it and tell me if this is a possibility. Also, I just wanna let you know that I'm not going to read the entire thing. If you guys want me to, I will, but you know with the Sumerians, they were very, very loving. They really loved to compliment their gods a lot. So a large portion of this is just complimenting all the attributes of Ninurta, everything that he has done and the like. What I will read to you is the portion where he decides where enough is enough, the people are begging him to go to war with Azag. And if you're reading along and you just want to read the portion that I'm reading, it starts at the quotation of 24 through 47, but I'll be reading other parts as well. Lord of the lofty station, foremost one who presides over all lords from the throne days, Ninurta, whose orders are unalterable, whose allotted fates are faithfully executed, my master. Having copulated with the verdant earth, Ninurta, she bore him a warrior who has no fear, the Azag, a child who sucked the power of milk without ever staying at the wet nurse, a foster child, O oh my master, knowing no father, a murderer from the mountains, a youth who came forth from, fragmented, whose face knows no shame, impudent of eye, an arrogant male, rejoicing in his stature. My hero, you who are like a bull, I will take my stand beside you. My master, who turns sympathetically towards his own city, who is effective in carrying out his mother's wishes, it has sired offspring in the mountains and has spread its seed far and wide. The plants have unanimously named it king over them. Like a great wild bull, it tosses its horns among them. The Ku, the Sajkal, the Diorite, the Usium, the Hamadite, and the heroic new stones, its warriors constantly coming, raiding the cities. From them, a shark's tooth has grown up in the mountains. It has stripped the trees. Before its might, the gods of those cities bowed towards it. My master, this same creature has erected a throne. It is not lying idle. Ninurta, my lord, it actually decides the land's lawsuits just as you do. Who can compass the Azag's dread glory? Who can counteract the severity of its frown? People are terrified. Fear makes the flesh creep. Their eyes are fixed upon it. My master, the mountains have taken their offerings to it. Hero, they have appealed to you because of your father, son of Enlil, Lord. Because of your superior strength, they are looking to you here. Since you are strong, my master, they are calling for your help. Say Ninurta, that not a single warrior counts except for you. They wanted to advise you about, fragmented. There have been consultations with a view to taking away your kingship. Ninurta, it is confident that it can lay hands on the power received by you in the Abzu. Its face is deformed. Its location is continually changing. Day by day, the Azag adds territories to its domain. But you will force it into the shackles of the gods. You, antelope of heaven, must trample the mountains beneath your hooves, Ninurta, lord, son of Enlil, who has been so far able to resist this assault. Besetting Azag is beyond all control. Its weight is too heavy. Rumors of its armies constantly arrive before ever a soldier is seen. This thing's strength is so massive, no weapon has been able to overturn it. Ninurta, neither the axe nor the all-powerful spear can penetrate its flesh. No no warrior like it has ever been created against you. Lord, you, who reach out towards the august divine powers, splendor, jewel of the gods, you, bull, with the features of a wild bull, with a prominent backbone, my Uta'ulu, Lord, son of Elil, what is to be done? My Lord cries, alas, so that the heaven trembled and the earth hurtled at his feet, was terrified at his strength. And Lil became confused and went out of Ikur. The mountains were devastated. That day, the earth became dark. The Anuna trembled. The hero beat his thigh with his fists. The gods dispersed. The Anuna disappeared over the horizon like sheep. The Lord arose, touching the sky. Ninurta went to battle. With one step, he covered a league. He was an alarming storm and rode on the eight winds towards the rebel lands. His arms grasped the lance. The mace snarled at the mountains. The club 
began to devour all the enemy. He fitted the evil wind with a Sirocco on a pole. An enormous hurricane irresistible went before the hero, stirred up the dust, caused the dust to settle, leveled high and low, filled the holes. It caused a rain of coals and flaming fires. The fire consumed men. It overturned all the trees by their trunks, reducing the forest to heaps. Earth put her hands on her heart and cried heroinely. The tigress was muddied, disturbed, clouded, stirred up. He hurried to battle on the boat, Makar Nuntaia. The people there did not know where to turn. It reduced the animals of the open country to firewood, roasting them like locusts. It was a deluge rising and disastrously ruining the mountains. The hero Ninurta led the march through the rebel lands. The light of the mountains did not gleam in the distance any longer. People gasped for air. Those people were ill. They hugged themselves. They cursed the earth. They considered the day of the Azag's birth a day of disaster. The Lord caused bilious poison to run over the rebel lands. The Azag leapt up at the head of the battle. For a club, it uprooted the sky. It was a mad dog attacking to kill the helpless dripping with sweat on its flanks. Like a wall collapsing, the Azag fell on Inerta, the son of Enlil. Like an accursed storm, it howled in a raucous voice, like a gigantic snake. It roared at the land. It dried up the waters of the mountains, dragged away by the tamarisk, tore the flesh off the earth, and covered her with painful wounds. It set fire to the reed beds, bathed the sky in blood, turned it inside out. It dispersed the people there. At that moment, on that day, the fields became black scum. Across the whole extent of the horizon, reddish like purple, dye. Truly it was so. Okay, so the story I just read to you is called the Lugali Ud Metlam B Nirgal. It's also known as Ninurta's Exploits. It talks about a lot of things that might occur with the fallout of a super volcano. I do want to bring up a couple of things. First thing I want to bring up is the fact they talk specifically about the diorite, hematite, and the Zalog stones. That to me is a clue that this is not just a story about springtime thunderstorms and a mythical creature. The mythical creature was the mountain, the mountain that erupts. And it sounds like Ninurta beats the mountain with water. Interesting. The Toba eruption leaves behind a lake. Another interesting part to this story is that when it speaks about heaven copulating with earth to make these eruptions, the ancients looked up because they feared something coming. The sun has an effect on earth that goes beyond brightening up the day. The sun cycles affect the earth by ways of earthquake, volcanic eruptions, and many more things. If you're interested in learning any more about this, I suggest the channel, Suspicious Observers. His channel is basically dedicated to the research about this. He even gives out earthquake warnings because he ties them to the sun cycles. Another thing that I find very interesting is that his entire family and himself are tied to agriculture and healing. The two things that need um, to happen for earth to repopulate. I'm just saying, is it possible that this story could be talking about something other than what they say it's talking about? And if it's not the Toba catastrophe, could it be some other volcanic eruption? I mean, throughout the story, they talk about the dust cloud that comes and poisons, the, the mucus that's running from your nose, the people are afraid, the rocks that are being tossed and killing people. Now, I know that many of you, like myself, are going to go right onto Google Earth and you're going to say, uh... <laughs> 4,000 miles away from Sumer. But in this very epic, they tell that Ninurta gets on his boat to go to the place where this is happening. So let's go take a look at Google Earth and see what we find. Okay, here we go. This is the portion of Earth that we're talking about right now. Lake Toba and the ancient super volcano is actually like right here. All the way over here is Sumer where we are getting that epic. Many of you are gonna say that's a 4,000 mile difference. Indeed it is. But I have a feeling that this volcano absolutely affected these people up here. 
It dried up their rivers. It created a dust cloud that poisoned and killed everyone. And they remembered it in the epic of Ninurta and his exploits. All right, you guys, that's what I got for today. Tell me what you think. If you guys know of any ancient story, myth, or folklore that you think might be tied to this, share it in the comment section because honestly, there has got to be something out there. I am willing to bet that India has at least stories of this and I have no doubt in my mind that the aborigines of Australia have some kind of legend linked to this. I find it all super fascinating. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. And you guys have yourselves a very great day.